Welcome math models. This is Miss P and we are going to be talking about stem and leaf plots, dot plots, and pie charts. These are two types of graphs that you have probably seen before, but it may have been a while. And I think you're probably all familiar with pie charts, but we're going to talk about a few patterns you should be seeing there. So let's start at the top. A stem and leaf plot is similar to a histogram. Laid out on its side, except you can still see individual data points. So here's what I mean. Here's a stem and leaf plot. Flip it over. Kind of looks like a histogram. So these would be your bars of your histogram. Kind of the same thing, except you can see the individual numbers. So it's called a stem and leaf plot because you split your data into stems, which are these, these are stems, and leaves, which all of these, those are the leaves. And then the key tells you what the stems and leaves stand for, so like right here. So this key is telling us for, and this is this, this represents this line right here, this bar, and one, that means 41. So that means 41, 41. So in this data set, we have 41 twice. Then we have 53, 59, 65. Oh, 65 is there four times. 65, 65, 65, 65. So I want you to think to yourself, what would this represent right here? So that number right there, the seven stem and then the one as the leaf, what does that represent? And hopefully you said that seven as your stem and one as your leaf would represent 71. So how about this? What about this right here? The eight stem? And the three leaf. Think about what that would represent. And hopefully you said that would represent 83. So I'll look way at the bottom here. Let's see if I can trick you a little bit. What about the stem of 10 and the leaf of 0? What would that be? See if you can figure it out. And hopefully you said that would be 100. So that's how you read a stem and leaf plot. And we got this example here where instead the stems are the ones place and the leaves are the tenths place. So the two stem and eight leaf would be 2.8 meters. So for instance, if I had one as a stem and one as the leaf, that would be 1.1 meters. Or if I had well, this right here, two is a stem, zero is a leaf. So hopefully you said that would be 2.0 meters. And then think about this one. What about well, this right here? Three is your stem and two is the leaf. Well, and hopefully you said 3.2 meters. So that is a stem and leaf plot. And what I would like you to do on the front, you're going to sketch something that looks like this so that when you glance at your notes, you know exactly what type of graph you're going to be looking at. And I'm just going to do a really simple example. I'm just making up some numbers here. Don't have to get too specific. Just make up some numbers to look like that so you can glance at that and go, oh, that's a stem and leaf plot. Okay, let's look at dot plots next. You've probably seen things like this before. Again, they kind of look like histograms. Except you're not grouping your data points. So we have 16, 17 would be right there. They didn't write it, but it would be right there. Um, 
18, 19, 20, 21, 22, this is a 23, 24, and so on. So the numbers are all there individually, even if you don't write every single one. For instance, when you're looking at fuel economy in miles per gallon, this right here means that for 27 miles per gallon, there was one car. So there was one car, that little guy right there, with a fuel economy of 27 miles per gallon. With this one, this would be 31. That means there were one, two, three, four, five, six cars with a fuel economy of 31 miles per gallon. So each dot represents one data point, and they just get stacked on top of each other if your numbers repeat. So what would that mean? What would that one point mean? Think about that. Pause the video if you need to. And hopefully you said that that means there is one car with a fuel economy of 40 miles per gallon. All right, flip that over to the front and just put a little mini dot plot so you know what you're going to learn about in these notes next time you look at them. Again, I'm just making up numbers. I'm not getting these from anywhere. It's just so you know what this is about. Cool. Well, let's look at the pie chart. So pie charts, I would imagine, is one of the graphs that you're more familiar with compared to others. Because we see them everywhere. And the important thing to remember is that they always have to add up to 100%. And there's some clues that you can look at. For instance, Captain America was chosen by 19% of people as the superhero battle winner. Batman is about twice as much. So if we kind of round that up, round that down, 40 is about twice as big as 20. And in fact, this pie slice... If you kind of cut that in half, it looks like it's twice as big as Captain America. So that's cool. That's how it's supposed to be. Or if you compare the 13 and the 27, 13 is yeah, pretty close to half of 27. And if you split Iron Man's little slice in half, it's about twice as big as Superman's. So that's the kind of relationships you're going to see in a pie chart. So then turn back to the front. And draw yourself a little pie chart. And it does not have to look exactly like mine. The idea is just to remind yourself what a pie chart looks like. And that's about it for our more displays notes. Thank you for watching.